just finished watching Wrestle Kingdom 12. And holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> you know. And it's one of those things where... Japan, as I've said time and time again, have it. They have it. They watch North American wrestling, and it's just like, there's something that I don't necessarily like. It's not as great as it once was. It could be better, but it could be worse. And then you watch Japanese wrestling, and a lot of people don't like it, and that's fine. But, holy shit, this... <laughs> another year of Wrestle Kingdom. No, this is only the second Wrestle Kingdom I've seen. I just never really watched all the other ones. So this show was really cool. So let's, yeah, let's get to it. You know. Alright, so we get to the tag team match, which opened the show. And we have Rapong 3K who took on the Young Bucks for the Junior IWGP Championship. And, of course, it was, you know, I think Young Bucks don't get enough credit, and I understand what people don't like about them. They steal catchphrases from DX and NWO when they do the super kick and all this other stuff. My really do enjoy the Bullet Club. I really fucking do. And this match was really cool as well. You know, it, it's one of those things that you could tell how cool the show and your were. And of course, you got Rocky Romero was there. And then, and eventually, seven time, went to the winners and new champions, seven time, Take team champions of IWGP Junior Heavyweight Young Bucks. So this match, well, I really enjoyed it. I'm trying to think back, I just I know I just saw it today. When a lot of matches, it, it was a really good match. I will say that. So then we had a gauntlet match. We had Bullet Club Chaos, Michael Logan, War Machine. So. Ring of Honor, guys. Uh, and... Suzuki-Gun, which had... Taichi... Takahashi... Yasuka, which is one of my favorites. And... Zack Sabre Jr. Now... Uh, and there was also... Takishi Japan. Juice Robinson, who used to be on NXT. Raizuki Tagichi. And Toki Map Mayim. So, yeah. I butchered that. But anyways. So. You had Suzuki Gun. Who beat Michael Elgin and um, Hanson and Rowan when... Zack Sabre submitted Hanson. You had Chaos came out and they beat Suzuki Gun. And then, of course, Chaos came out and then. Oh no, wait, how did that go? But Bullet Club. Yeah, Zack Sabre submitted Raymond Rowe. And then you had Suzuki Gun go over. Like, anyways, Chaos ended up winning. I'm trying I'm trying to think back, and I uh, just watched it. So Chaos ended up winning, anyways, and it was a really good match. And, and it really sucked that Elgin and War Machine lost. But, there you go. I mean, Chaos is one of the biggest teams in... New Japan anyway, so... Yeah, it was a good match. I really enjoyed it. But it could have... Been better to see... Either Bullet Club or... At least... Michael Logan's team win. 
So then we had what I, which I thought was the match of the night. Uh, it was Cody versus Kota Ibushi. And of course, Mandy Rose come out. And it was really cool. You know, you saw a fucking crossroads where Kota Ibushi landed on the apron. You know, that was pretty intense. I thought anyway, as you thought, Kota Ibushi would be out, but... And then, then there was the, the spot where Kota Ibushi knocked Brandy Rhodes off the ring by accident. He bumped into Cody Rhodes, and... Anyways, so... Brandy gets knocked out in outside the ring, and... You get that macho man Hulk Hogan Elizabeth moment where Kota picks up Brandy and is gonna carry her out or whatever, and Cody Rhodes kicks him, and he ha it, it was kind of interesting. She just glides off of him. So Kota's off screen. You get Cody going on the floor, chucking on Brandy, and then. He smiles, well then she gets up and she laughs and they have a good laugh. So it was a setup, basically. But I was really impressed. I mean, Brandy is, in this role, I find, anyway, it's because when she's in the Ring of Honor, it's mostly she's helping out and she's, well, I just don't find a lot of character. But when she's in Japan, you saw a lot of, a tr like a tribute to Bobby Heenan, sort of. Because she would have Cody Rhodes try to pin Kota Bushi, and she would either hold his foot or Kota Bushi would go to the ropes and she'd try to trip him or something. And then, of course, she got that stuff. But, anyways. And Kota Bushi ended up beating Cody, which I thought was interesting. You know, with an accident like that, it's. You know, these guys are tough. They're very tough. But this was, like I said, I would think the match of the night. But I'm uh, pretty sure others would disagree. Then we have Los and Gondables to Japan, which was evil, and Sonata, and they defeated the Killer Elite Squad, Davy Boy Smith Jr., and. Lance Archer. Now, of course, this was for the IWGP Tag Team Championship. Now, I'm going to go back a little bit because this Scotland match was for the Open Weight Never Championship, another promotion from Japan. So, I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Anyway, so this match was good, too. I really enjoyed it. I think that Sonata's haircut was funny. I really do enjoy Lance Archer and Davy Boy Smith, who basically owned most of the match. And it eventually went to Evil and Sonata, and they are the, are the tag, team cha tag team champions. So, there we go to Hiroku Goto, who defeated Minoru Suzuki in a hair versus hair match for the Never Open Weight Championship. And so, I really enjoy Suzuki. I think he's a great wrestler. And, you know, her Goto is also uh, very cool. I think that this match was... Very close. You thought maybe Suzuki would win, but I was wrong. It, it kind of just one of those. It was like the last match, you know. Kota got beat up the most, and yet Suzuki fucking got the upper hand, and that meant that he got to shave his head. So you would think that Goto would go and 
do it for him, but of course, being the honorable thing, you know, Japan's always the honorable country, that they just are. Suzuki just shaved his own head, basically. But, anyways, the new champion, Hiro Kikoto, and it was, like I said, it was one way ass kicking, but at the same time, that person won. So, very good. Then we have Roll Off Sprite defeating Modi Swall and Hiromu Takahashi and Kishida for the Hector Jr. Heavyweight Championship, IWGP. And, uh,. This was pretty cool. I think that it was another close call. Of course, you get Marty Skull, who is pretty famous for snapping people's fingers. He got his fingers snapped, you know, tying up Hermu outside the ring. And of course, there was a surprise to see that Will Offspray won. So he is the new champion, which I think is cool. And, you know, beating Marty Skull. It kind of makes me wonder what will happen now. Because I know that he's in the ball club for Ring of Honor. So, it'll be interesting to see his belt alongside Young Bucks. So, but this was, this was another really good match. And colorful too. I mean, you know, Takahashi has the colored long hair, you know, and of course Kushida is always uh, one, of, one of my favorite Japanese wrestlers. Then we had the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. It was Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Jay White. And uh, Jay White, another Ring of Honor wrestler. You know, it's kind of funny because you see these guys, you know, out of the promotion that they're usually in and they're in this one and they're just different like I don't think Jay White is a heel in Ring of Honor but coming to Japan you know anyways yeah it, it's really cool just to see them on other element but this was another great match I think that Jay White really gave it to Hiroshi Tanahashi but of course, that was a close call. Uh, Tanahashi got hurt. And uh, you only thought it was going to go to Jay White, but ended up that Tanahashi was able to hit the high fly flow. And there you go. He still remains Intercontinental Champion. So that's that was a really good match. Then we have a no disqualification match for the IWGP United States Championship match. You know, it's kind of like, okay, I get it. Japan has its own Intercontinental Championship. I'm not sure why the hell they had to go with the United States Championship. It's one of it's just really fucking annoying to me, especially because you have two wrestlers from Canada and it just made no sense but a few weeks ago you had the video package of Chris Jericho the Alpha Chris Jericho not the Y2J or Lionheart Chris Jericho saying that he was going to go after Kenny Omega and I you know I saw highlights today and very awesome to see can he speak fluent Japanese? But this was a very good match. Of course, get Chris Jericho putting the referee's son in the walls of Jericho. Or, or yeah, the WWE version of Walls of Jericho. There was actually a point where I think it was, uh, no, it was Omega. He put Omega in the walls of Jericho. But well, it was the what I call the real walls of Jericho, where he would sit up and have his knee in the lower back of Omega. So anyways, 
there was a really nice spot where Jericho was on the top rope and he got knocked over by Kenny and he he slipped, he fell onto the table. There was the walls of Jericho outside the ring. There was a part where Kenny Omega jumped and Chris Jericho caught him in midair and hit him in the ribs. There's Kenny Omega getting busted open. There was you know, they were throwing chairs at each other. It, it was very cool. It, you know, you don't see that very much in North American professional wrestling. So it's very refreshing to see that again. This was a pretty interesting match, but it eventually went to Kenny Omega. I always thought that would happen. Just kind of like, okay, Chris Jericho makes his debut in Japan and then loses at Wrestle Kingdom. But, you know, it is what it is. I think that they're both very good competitors. So, it, you know, it was still a really good match. Very entertaining. I think the one complaint that I have that I think everyone else has is that it's an disqualification match and yet the referee still try to control the match. I don't know if no disqualification means it's also no count out, but uh, yeah. Well, anyways, that was still a good match. And, you know, well, we'll see what happens from here. I don't know if Chris Jericho is going to stay in Japan. I don't know if he's going to go back to WWE or do whatever, but, you know, only time will tell, and I just don't know how long Chris Jericho is going to wrestle for. Then we go on to the main event. We have Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada versus Tazoya Nato, and this was for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. And of course, you know, it's kind of like this match to me maybe had a slow start. I was kind of getting a little antsy at this match, but it, to me, it kind of was a slow start. You had a lot of really good spots. Also, uh, it eventually picked up. There was. Rainmaker who put Nato in the Cobra Clutch. So, you know, it was very cool. I think this match was good for what it was. It wasn't as good as all the other matches that I saw, but this was a good match. Um, Rainmaker retains the title, and that's when the show ends. He says a few words, and then the show ends. So it was a really good show, you know, I wish I could pronounce half these people's names, but uh, this was cool, I really enjoyed it, and I'm not sure who it was, but they paid tribute to Shinsuke Nakamura, or as he was called, Nakamura Shinsuke, by doing the Bumbai, so that was cool. There was a lot of cool stuff, you know. It was mentioned of WWF at one point with Chris Jericho. There was mention of Maggie Logan, uh, Pride of Oshawa, Ontario, which I thought was pretty cool. This was a cool show, and I believe that Wrestle Kingdom always has a good show. And I think next year will be better, next year, the year before that, whatever, who knows. I really enjoyed it. I wish I could try to remember all these matches, but like I said, I enjoyed them and I know I didn't do this for review justice, but I really think that the people there had a lot of fucking fun. And, you know, I can't wait till next year. Anyways, talk to you later. Oh yeah, and this is, uh, the official 
first episode of 2018. Talk to you later. Bye.